Hello everyone, Shirley here. Today we're back in Castle Nathria on Mythic difficulty, looking at the Hungering Destroyer boss. I realized after the fact that I didn't save our follow-up kill to this fight, so there's going to be a few things I'm going to point out that are going to be slightly different than what you're seeing on screen. I'll point that out, you know, when it's relevant. But anyway, the main mechanic for this fight are these miasma rings that you see around four people. I get one at the beginning here, and it's funny, this, this mechanic is actually, like, cued to your character ID or something, because I get it every single time on pull without fail. So that's why I'm moving up to this exact same location um, every time we do this fight, which is on the front left there at that... Uh, circle marker. Um, we're dealing with this mechanic in a couple of ways. We got two weak auras, one of which is the one you see in the middle of the screen up there that tracks the four health bars of the four players that have the debuff, as well as the other one that makes them yell it in um, general chat, basically, above their heads. You can see exactly how much HP they have and, uh, you know, how you need to position yourself accordingly to deal with it. But anyway, on the pull here, I'm going to, you know, obviously use all the cooldowns and I'm going to move up because I always get it. So I'm going to be on that first um, ring up in front of the boss. Unfortunately, that means that you're going to get parried. Otherwise, my assigned position is back here on the triangle marker. And every time you get one of these, uh, these miasma rings, you need to move to the marker that uh, DBM assigns you basically to deal with this mechanic and... Uh, move back every single time it drops off, so I'm always going to fall back to the triangle position to help out whoever has it at that place. And once the first big mechanic goes off here, the consume, we're going to still sit on the boss and hit him for a few globals, basically, to get in as much damage as we can, and then I'm going to have Heroic Leap up for every single one of those to jump out and um, get to the Spirit Link Totem. And we're in the back of the room there, all the people with the Miasma need to get as far away as possible as how our raid was dealing with this to um, just separate those out so you're not just siphoning off the entire raid. And then after it drops and switches targets, that's when we're going to all spread out coming back to the boss. Now, the first thing I want to point out that I'm doing differently on sequential kills is this uh, this run out debuff. When you need to run out with the, with the other circle around you and you're going to be dropping these orbs, um, later on, if you have enough health, uh, anything over like 50%-ish HP, I'd say, um, you can just stay in melee instead of running out as a warrior, and that'll drop your orb right in melee, but everybody else is running out and making tons of room. You can pop Spell Reflect after the fact and reflect the orb and not take damage from it. Now, right here, this exact overlap, when I have a Miasma and we have to run out there, um, two things can occur right there. You can either just sit in melee and reflect your own orb, um, which is what I should have done there because I was just fine, or if you have low health from the Miasma debuff, anything below 50% HP, uh, that's when you're going to want to actually reflect before the cast goes off. And what that'll do is you'll still spawn the orb, but you'll reflect the damage from it. Um, so you do want to run out in that situation to get the orb out of melee. But if you're below 50% health and you don't reflect, it's probably going to kill you without some kind of DR. You could have parried it or, you know, ignored pain or something, but you can just completely negate it by reflecting as well. Um, anyway, so moving back around to the triangle position here, I did get one of the volatile ejections right there. And that brings up my uh, thoughts about how you want to position yourself on this, this particular boss fight. So right here is where I stayed in melee and ate that orb, and I did get a little bit low here. I could have reflected the orb instead, but anyway, this boss has a really big hitbox, and as we position around him here, you can see that I'm not actually touching the ring on his hitbox on the ground there, and you can still melee him. So if you have the debuff, you basically want to be a few yards behind the actual ring on the ground. That way, anybody that needs to be soaking that uh, ring with you can do so, but also gives enough room in front of the ring for melee to not be in the orb with you, because you only need a couple of people at a time in the Miasma ring at any given moment to help heal, you know, the person with the debuff. Also, if you uh, notice that the person is running out, 
It's because they've got the volatile ejection just like there, so don't follow them out even if they're low health. You're just going to get clipped and die. Um, which is another thing I wanted to point out on positioning is the volatile ejections hitbox. There's three of them will go out. Ideally, you'd be on different corners of the boss, but sometimes it can all happen on the same side. You just got to be paying attention and spread out um, accordingly with the people with the arrows above their heads. However, if you're inside the ring of the boss itself as melee, when those go out, the hitbox on the line is really big. It's it's really it's bigger than it looks like, and it will clip you if you're inside it and just instantly kill you, basically. So try to stay outside the hitbox as much as possible. So right here, I'm at low health, and we get the uh, the run out. So I'm going to reflect before that goes out to negate that damage. Unfortunately, that's going to leave the orb down there, but it you know, buys me enough time to get back in and help siphon more HP off people. I didn't have parry up for that particular instance, so, you know, that's what you got to do to, to stay alive. I'm going to rotate back around. I realize we're getting down to the end of the fight here. There was one situation I wanted to point out. I believe it was after the second um, consume when we come back in on the boss and he's about 45% health. As an arms warrior, I would probably save my avatar uh, there because it'll be up in about 45 seconds so you can charge back in and use your Ravager and Warbreaker at that moment but if you hold on to your avatar it'll come back up at the exact moment when the boss hits 35% that way you've got a you know extra potential for more recklessness during the execute phase um, we got down to the last wire here unfortunately I jumped back on one of those orbs another reason why you really want to be running those to the sides of the room and not uh, not directly back. I luckily got saved by that clutch spirit link totem. Come back in, get right back on my marker here. That is one last thing. When you're in the uh, miasma circles, you get the stacking debuff in the right hand corner. You can see there. You want to be in between 10 to 15 ish stacks, and then step out if you can, provided that person is healthy. That way, you can let that thing reset. Otherwise, it's not doing much. But anyway, there's the hungering destroyer. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.